estoy enraizado a la pradera por cuatro generaciones. Ella está en mis sueños, eleva mi espíritu y es donde encuentro la paz. My name is uh, Juan Pablo Alves. I am from Uruguay. I come from two generation uh, farm background. Well, ecosystem services are the services we receive from nature, and those are for free. Uh, mostly when nature is intact, the ecosystem structure is intact, and then it makes ecosystem processes and functions work. But what happens if we disrupt ecosystem structure, such as, you know, overgrazing? You cut the forest, you put animals there, and then suddenly you affect the biodiversity, the soil starts getting more erosion, and then this will uh, pro produce siltation in the rivers. Then the, the bed of the river will raise and they will cause floods downstream and they will disrupt communities downstream. That's a picture of how ecosystem services work. So in order to revert that is expensive. You know, we have to either do mitigation or either do management practices that repair those problems. I have two case studies I'm working with. One is in Vermont and one is in Santa Catarina in Brazil. I have nine sustainability indicators I'm studying. One is animal husbandry, biodiversity, community health, energy, farm financials, nutrient management, soil health, pest management and water management. So I want to know which management method, either traditional management intensive grazing or uh, confinement operations deliver better sustainability indicators. In traditional grazing, you leave the animals to graze a large area, and they don't, they do not have paddocks or subcells in the pastures. So um, the pasture never rests. Animals regraze the same plants several times, and this um, debilitates the roots and it made the whole system less resilient. So with management intensive grazing, you divide up the land and you um, defer the animals. Uh, the animals will stay in every spot, in every paddock, from 12 hours to up to three days. The more paddocks you have, the less impact you will cause to the overall ecosystem in that place. 15 to 60 days later, this paddock, this old paddock, is completely uh, ready to graze again. And with climate change, this is great because it's, it's, a way, it's a fast way of building soils, storing carbon underground, and um, also producing uh, great ecosystem services such as food and uh, fiber. Adoptive management and grazing plays a really important role on, 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 this, on this place, on the Atlantic forest of Brazil, because as an agroecological practice, it's more benign to the, to the environment and it makes farmers more independent as they start controlling their farm from, from the gate in the farm. They were able to double the amount of cows they, they milk. They milk more per cow. They have more time for uh, leisure. They use uh, much less antibiotics, much less um, veterinary um, medicines. So if they can manage pasture, produce more pasture, therefore produce more outputs, such as milk, eggs, wool, or meat. They can have better finances, uh, their farm uh, is engaged in the process, and therefore there's more, more community. This is what I'm finding in, in, in Brazil. Management intensive grazing is gr growing in Vermont, so it's, it's catching up with uh, traditional grazing and uh, confinement operations. We are not aiming to come back to a pristine place because it will be impossible to come back to a pristine place and to restore what was uh, deforested and degraded. But at least, I think, in my view, the most important thing is to restore the flow of ecosystem services that was lost. If we can keep these farmers doing benign practices in the, for the environment and happy, I think it's a great achievement we can 